Hello, so hopefully it shared the video. I don't actually really know if this mask's got a voice diaphragm or not, so I'll probably take it off in a minute so you can obviously hear me a bit more clearly. Ah, uh, yeah, it looks like that's probably a voice diaphragm there, but I've not actually uh, put the mask on before this video as it came yesterday, my all day yesterday. So um, hopefully it shares the stream. Don't forget to click like because that seems to help YouTube share it. So for all the people asking, does this seem to be a good gas mask? Yes, it does. Uh, it reminds, reminds me more of a firefighter's respirator, just one designed to work with 40 millimeter filters rather than a, um, you know, an airline. But yeah, seems to be quite a good mask. It came in this box. Came with a FP5 filter that was sealed. Uh, the mask was in a plastic bag and everything, so it seemed to be brand new. No, it doesn't have a drinking tube on it as far as I'm aware. No, it certainly doesn't. I think this is an industrial mask, not a military mask. But, um, yeah, seems to be quite good, especially as at the moment these haven't horribly inflated in price. Also, another cool thing, from what I understand, these are fairly rare, but I managed to get hold of a strict on NBC hood for the uh, sort of communist Warsaw Pact M17 clones. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, thanks. I saw I got to 70k subscribers the other day, so that's good. So, um, yeah, anyway, I'll take this off for now so you can hear me a bit better. But for the people asking, do these masks seem good? Yes, they do. Um, but I'll get a review done of them properly at some point. But the point is that, you know, for a mask that I hadn't seen before that's turned up on eBay for like £40 in the UK, not bad at all. But yeah, it's so it's obviously got your XL valve there, voice diaphragm there. If you want to see what the inside looks like. I assume the top strap is adjustable somehow, but I've not figured out how yet, because it seems to mostly be, um, yeah, top strap's a bit different, you know, maybe the top strap isn't adjustable, but yeah, it's basically, um, you know, a very generic panoramic sort of industrial style mask, but for what it is, it's pretty good. So yeah, there is some good news, at least, about coronavirus. Also, apologies for anybody I couldn't keep up with the comments um, recently, because yesterday, um, obviously I was at work all day. I was at work all day today as well, but yesterday I was at work all day in the day, then out in the evening. And at the moment, I'm getting somewhere between like 20 and 50 comments per hour, I think. It's sort of insane. So, I, you know, there's no way of going back, really, and just going through all the comments. So I'm trying to keep up the comments again now that I'm back in, you know, and stuff, but material of the hood um it looks like it's hard to say it's like some sort of fabric on the inside and i guess it's an impermeable material uh right adam nice to see you on how are you you all right but yeah there is some good news regarding the virus stuff uh, at the moment is that they think the arnold is actually going to be about two which is still a scary high number, but it means it's not as, um, you know, dangerous as it was. Um, you know, in terms of Western countries, they think it's going to be an armor of about four in um, sort of countries of poor sanitation or people who are packed very densely in urban areas, but an armor of about two at the moment in sort of Western countries. Uh, weirdly, I've been accused of both shilling for the gas mask industry trademark at the moment, um, and I have no idea what the gas mask industry is, because I guess people aren't aware that there's lots and lots of different respirator country, uh, companies all across the world in different countries, you know. Um, if you're buying masks as surplus, uh, like Avon or whoever aren't getting the money from it, because you're just literally, you know, the money is going to whoever is selling the mask. Um... I've also been accused of being racist because apparently it's racist to say maybe you should protect yourself from a virus. I mean, I don't think the virus is going to discriminate, you know, the actual virus itself. It might have started in China, but that doesn't mean it's, um, you know, if it gets to whatever country you're in, you're going to catch it from whoever has it. Um, the other thing as well was, you know, delusional paranoid preppers and things like that. You know, not, not saying... I'm calling other people that that's what I've been called because apparently even though in the UK now as of today they're saying um you know they had doctors on the radio and that saying people should think about buying hand sanitizer washing their hands more often you know they were saying lots of sensible things like that 
apparently they're delusional as well. So, um, you know, it's, I'd assume SJW's GT, I don't know, just, you know, random weird comments that, you know, I've been getting. So, um, but yeah, so as I said, apologies if I've not been keeping up with the comments. Um, if you've got a question for me, you want to re-ask it, ask it obviously in the stream or ask it, um, in the comments on the new, you know, make a new comment and then I can see it again. But yeah, just because obviously I've been at work at the weekend, no way I can be replying to all the crazy amount of comments I've been getting. But yeah, it's nice to get 70k subscribers to give people an idea. I think it's something like 65k subscribers a week or so ago. So we're up like 5k subscribers in like a week, 10 days, something like that. Yeah, I like lower budget gas masks because it gives people a good idea of what's good or not, you know, if they're on a low budget. Um, but like I said, this, let's see if there's a production date on this mask anywhere. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, um, I like testing low budget gas masks because it's also cheaper for me to buy them, you know. Uh, it says Baku Pano CR at the top. That's the only thing I've seen on it so far in terms of a date. I mean, that, that's not a date, it's just the writing. Is there anything on the straps? Ah, yes, here we go. 90, so I guess this is from 1990. So pretty much as Poland became independent from um, the Warsaw Pact, sort of Soviet Union bloc. So, yeah. So, yeah. Oh, something to note as well. Um, despite the massive amount of support I've been getting recently, which is really nice, YouTube has demonetized uh, every single video I've done on the coronavirus. So, um, yeah, there's that. So, big thank you to everybody that's donated. Uh, whether or not the views will suddenly drop down, I don't know. But other channels have been saying the same thing, that suddenly they're not being recommended coronavirus videos anymore. So, maybe it's YouTube's decided that um, you're not allowed to talk about it, and they're doing their subtle kind of thing of that. Um... The only thing I can suggest, Vipin, is what I've been doing with relatives in, and is showing them some of the actual videos that have come out of like places like Wuhan. Because so I think if they see how many people are like flooding some of the hospitals and things like that, if they see those videos, uh, I think you know that convinces them more than anything you can say. Because when I was visiting my aunt and uncle yesterday, they were saying things like, you know, oh, it's just going to be like the flu. Thank you very much, Pete. I appreciate you. They were saying, you know, it's just going to be like the flu. It's not going to be bad at all. You show them the videos, and then all of a sudden they were saying to me, you know, well, how would I get a gas mask? Well, you're welcome, you know, have any or borrow any from me if you need them. But, you know, it's, I think, that kind of awareness where people don't, until they see it for themselves. Oh, thank you very much, Dan V. V. I really appreciate it. Also, do you have a Discord ID? Because if you do, um, you know, you can be invited onto the server. Same for um, Pete Shrimps and anybody that donates and get on the Discord. But I thank you very much for the big donation. I really appreciate that. Um, but yeah, if I'm missing questions and anybody's asking, just repost them. Don't spam the chat so much. Oh, and thank you very much as well, Edge Blackstar. Um, right. What I'm going to say is the King Tactical stuff, it seems to be some brand that rebrands other surplus stuff. So it seems a lot of the King Tactical stuff is actually um, what they called, um, it's just like the Israeli Shalom stuff or Shalom stuff that's rebranded. So like you get Israeli Type 80 filters, basically. And then they were rebranding it as their own things or they're rebranding it. But what they're doing now, it seems, is there's Chinese copies of the Israeli 4A1, which are even cheaper than, the, you know, the proper Israeli 4A1s. Um, and they're basically rebranding that as their own name. So it basically seems like they're a company selling other people's masks or surplus masks for, um, you know, a huge markup. So it sounds like a shitty company. I think some of their King Tactical filters as well are um, just like the cheap Chinese filters that they're getting in black rather than like grey, and then putting their logo on it. Um, the M95 is meant to be very good. I don't have one, but I have the M98, and I really need to find it, because um, I've got one somewhere. I bet it's in that box, but just buried. Um, i tell you what I'll do. I'll take loads of the stuff off of here, and I'm just going to have a look in this box, because the M98 is one of my favourite masks, and I have no clue where I put it recently. Obviously, the problem is where I collect so much of this stuff. Thank you very much, Martin. Thank you very much, Amelo or Armelo. Sorry, I really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, let me 
let me look through this. But the Scott M98, for those of you that don't know, seems to be kind of a continuation on some of the finish masks. The M95 is pretty similar, but it's just got two eyepieces. The M98 is like the panoramic version. But yeah, that's the thing is, what annoys me is when people say, like, oh, you're a paranoid prepper. Well, I'm not even a prepper. But the thing that annoys me is, like they've already been saying, if, if you have underlying medical conditions, you're more vulnerable. Well, I have underlying medical conditions, you know. If you're elderly, you're more vulnerable. Well, I'm not elderly, but I've got relatives that are elderly, you know. It's that kind of thing where there's people saying, oh, it's, it's just as bad as the flu. But the thing is, the flu could be bad if you had a major flu pandemic. Um, you know, so it's that kind of thing that annoys me where people are saying, oh, people are paranoid if they want to take precautions. Well, maybe some people have loved ones or have, you know, medical conditions themselves or have, you know, young children or young nieces and nephews, that kind of thing, grandkids, you know. But let me see if I can look in this box and find my M98. I'm hoping none of this stuff tips off. Oh, I really don't want that to tip off and break because these cost quite a bit to buy replacements in the UK. It's the um, CDV 700 Geiger tubes, and this one's in really nice condition. Um, but uh, I think my M98 might be in this box. But Right, so for those of you that are saying about the King Tactical masks, lots of them are Israeli 4A1 surplus masks or basically rebrands of the 4A1. Um, they might be all right in themselves, but they're being sold as a massive markup, so don't pay that for them. Anyway, let's let's carry on looking through this box and see if the M98 is in this box. I think it probably is, but how deep it's buried, I don't know. Oh, I think I... Oh, no, that's my riot helmet. It's not actually a riot helmet. It's the... Um, what's it? There's the Soviet MM1. Is my Scott M98 in here, or is that somewhere else? No, I don't think it is in this box. That's weird, I don't know where I put it. I'll definitely have to find it, because, um, like I said, one of my favourite masks at the moment, but I've put it in a box somewhere. Oh, um, hi, as you're on. Do you have any links? Oh, thank you, TLR. Let me add you to Discord. Oh, thank you very, very much for the person who gave a $100 donation. Sorry, I just missed that. Dr. Van V. Um... Thank you, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. If you've got a Discord ID, please come on to the uh, server where people chat and share information. But I really appreciate that. Thank you. Because at the moment, I said I've been giving stuff to some of my friends and relatives just so they've got equipment who never normally into it. And I put a load of new prescriptions through um, the other day as well because where I need to get um, pentasomeslamine for myself, I need to try and bulk up on that because annoyingly, you know... Um, you can only get so much at a time and you don't get stuff that lasts all that long but obviously i'm going to need it if anything goes wrong and the supply chains are interrupted so um let me just invite you to the server whoever's given a discord id oh okay that's right hype it's just yeah people were asking about them earlier and we couldn't find any in stock but yeah because every the annoying thing was in the video i said hype sent me this one i don't have a link for it and then i had loads and loads and loads and loads of comment saying you know Give me a link to um, the filter. Give me a link to the filter. Uh, there you go. So, um, oh, and don't forget to like the stream, everybody. Anybody that's come on, just because it seems liking it helps YouTube share it. Um, but as said. You know. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, actually, if the lens in the Furnace is acrylic. I'll tell you what we can do. I've got the instructions for the Furnace inside the box. So what we can do, and where do I pop him just now? I'll put it down somewhere, I don't know if I put it, but we'll look in the instruction, we'll see if anybody in the chat speaks Polish, what it says the um, material of the lenses. Most masks are polycarbonate now, not acrylic, and I know polycarbonate is like part acrylic, isn't it, in the composite of it, but... Yeah, I like it so far, I've not done a review of it yet, but just from simply putting it on, it's comfortable enough, it seals properly. Right. Whether or not there's any information on the front there, apologies for my blistered looking fingers, but it's because I've been working today and yesterday, so um, hydrogen, sodium hydroxide, yeah, burning my fingers. Let me uh, invite Flip Flop as well. There we go. Right, as I was just saying, crazy dogs, the filter um, is one hype sent me. Where did I put it just now? Because I had it in my hand just now. Oh, I put the furnace on the floor. Yeah. 
Hype sent me, when he sent me a load of stuff recently, he sent me this filter and the other one, where I probably just put the other one somewhere as well. Um, both of them are Russian filters. There's the other one. They're modern. A lot of people are saying, oh, can you cut this open to prove it's not asbestos? You don't need to. If you look in it from that angle, you can see it's a modern P3 particulate style one. Um, but he was saying, sadly, he doesn't have any more of these in stock at the moment. But... Um, yeah, I think they're called dot filters, aren't they, in English? Something like that. Yeah, this is the thing, Richard, that's sort of slightly worrying. Or, I don't know how you want to look at it, but a lot of the time on the media, they've been saying the fatality rate is really, really low. But the problem is at the moment, because you've not had, like, the first month or something of everybody that got initially infect infected, either died or recovered, and there's some people that are in critical condition, obviously some in pretty, you know, sensitive condition, some who are doing quite well. You can't get a very good um, mortality rate from it yet. You know, it's that sort of thing where um, it's sort of hard to say, you know, where it's, I think it's quite irresponsible when the news media say, oh, it's just a very light, you know, low thing. It's what you should do is just, you know, be kind of researching it for yourself. What masks do you mean by the FP5? Because an FP5 filter is... Where did I put the FP5 filter? That I had to look at that mask there. There you go. The FP5 filter is like the kind of Polish military one that Maspol made for ages. Um, I like the FP5 filter. Some people don't like it, but to me they seem absolutely fine. I mean, I don't know if there were any design flaws of them, but if you're using them for P3 protection, they'd be fine at that. You know, against most gases, they seem to be fine. Uh, at the weekends, I do a kitchen porter job, so that's just literally cleaning. Uh, you know, working with chemicals, cleaning. Um, during the week, um, I do YouTube stuff, and obviously when I've got spare time. And during, um, on Thursdays, I volunteer of the Blue Cross. I've got it in the other room hype at the moment. I can get it for the next stream. But yeah, I wanted to be really careful with it just because I didn't want to, you know, have it in a stream, put it down, knock it over, that kind of thing. Right. Glad you um, enjoyed the videos, Dixie. Anyway, yeah, let me go back to the thing. I was just checking nobody who donated or posted Discord IDs if they haven't already. Swiss masks are 40 millimeter, yes. So if your Swiss SM67 fits you, is in good condition, you can put the Scott Pro 2000 filters on it. it would fit, it would be fine. That's cool, Tom. Yeah, I saw you sent some Facebook messages just now. I haven't really looked at them yet, but I saw you said one that, how old are you on 26? But um, yeah, thought I'd wear this today because it, it's been through the laundry. I still need to find where my own merchandise is. But if none of you are subscribed to 13 o'clock, you should check them out, because I think a lot of you would enjoy it if you like podcast-type videos. Um, your man, you what you'd probably want, not related at all to coronavirus-type stuff, but it's just the Jaguar Firecat-type ones, because they're the ones that are made in Taiwan, a pretty much very good barnet um, ones. Right. The funny thing is, Tom, and apparently there's a scientific reason for this, is when you have autism, you don't smile or change your facial expression much. So apparently your face doesn't age as fast. That's that's what I've been told by people who seem to know what they're on about with this sort of stuff. So I'll take their word for it. I probably smile more on stream when I'm talking to people than I normally do. Because normally I'm just like most of the time. Oh, well, thank you, Podge McLeod um, or McLeod. Sorry. 3M6800 of P3 round. Enjoy your open. That should work absolutely fine. Let me look up which particular model the 3M6800 is. Um, yeah, that's the full face one. That'll be absolutely fine. Um, the P3 square filters are actually better in terms of um, the 3M P3s that they've got the plastic covers over. But the round ones are absolutely fine. Right. I'm just going to start adding all the people, Mike, that you're saying about if I've not done it yet. So Armalo. Oh, and thanks for the nice message, Horror Freak. Um, but yeah, let me add Armelo. So is... Oh, I see. His name's Armelo1994, and he's got... That makes sense. Yeah, I was just being a bit confused. And he's typed his name right, excellent. 
yeah, I think I think for the people saying why are you so interested in weapons I've, and that sort of you know kind of weird history stuff, I think it's just that's what my autistic uh, interest is, you know, rather than being My Little Pony or something like that. Thankfully, it's um, you know kind of a history related thing, but it has to be stuff I find interesting because this was the weird thing when I went through school. This is just going off on the tangent. When we had history lessons and I did A level history, if it was bits of history like to do with dictatorships and stuff like that. I could sink all the information in, no problem. If it was history of politics of certain nations, with, you know, for a 300 year history, like when we did the, um, I think it was politics of Britain between 1700 and like 1900, that was fucking boring. And I did shit on that paper just because I could not remember it, you know, which politician passed which law in which year, you know, didn't really affect anything. But when it was, you know, all about Stalin and sort of genocides and gulags and everything, that would stick in my brain. Oh yeah, that, that sounds good. Visa, I'll have a look at that. Thank you, well, Visa, sorry. Yeah. Sadly, I don't know how easy it is to just simply move to the US, but yeah, I do really like the US and its culture and everything, just because, um, you know, the whole thing of the US is obviously, like, well, originally what it was, obviously, and what sort of we were saying about is the whole thing of, you know, the rights of the individual as opposed to sort of a nanny state sort of controlling entity. Um, you know, and sadly, that's what seems to be being eroded in a lot of Western countries at the moment. Because that's the thing what I don't get is the people, you know, obviously want to be in the US, but then do not want to respect the Constitution or want it done away with. And you think, well, that was literally put in place to protect your rights. But anyway, let's go back to, sorry, what we were chatting about. Um, this thingy Bob sent me the link here. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, you, you'll have to hope, won't you, that there's people of certain generations that will actually understand why you need those rights, you know, and why you need to preserve those rights. Um, I know we're really going off topic now from what we're on about, but that's fine. But, um, you know, because if you give up rights, you're not easily going to get them back. Um, let me Google it for you. I don't know anything off of, about it, D Van V, off the top of my head, but if I Google it, let's see if I can tell you anything about it. Right, oh, that, is this the ones that are coming up in the 20 packs? Right, the purple line, if it's using the ABEC type thing, like the purple pink color even means it's a combination, oh, it actually says combined filter. So yeah, that's, what, does it say it's an ABEC one? Yeah. Uh, picture is not an accurate representation of the Hungarian K2 or ABEC style filter, although these types of filters are technically expired as well. Uh, um, the particle protection bit of it, will be absolutely fine because like in all these other filters if i just get the one i was showing on this mask earlier the particle bits of filters take ages to expire the vapor protection which is the bit in there um generally you've got the particle bit at the front you've got a vapor section there and then you've got like a cloth bit on top that stops you inhaling the charcoal um what that's designed to do is obviously the particle filters don't really expire because it's just like a paper heaper filter. It's like what you're having a room, you know, air purifier. The bit that expires um, is generally the charcoal section. So if you end up buying filters that are out of date, obviously if they're in date and properly sealed, this isn't the problem. But the bit that ends up stopping to work sooner rather than later is the bit that filters the actual gas because um, it the charcoal inside that's impregnated absorbs the gas. The bit that lasts ages is the particle filter, because that essentially just catches dust and fine particulates. So against viruses and bacteria, the particle filter is the important bit. That's the bit that essentially works like a dust mask filter. Um, what I can actually show you, if you want to see what filters look like in bigger kind of bits, is my room purifier. I can pull the filters out and actually show them. So here we go. They'll be a bit dusty, but that's because they've done the job. So. This is a HEPA filter. This is what like the P3 filter does. See all the dust caught in there? That's because it does its work. So basically what this does is it catches things. As these filters catch more and more dust, they become more efficient. Um, so they clog more, so it gets harder to breathe through them. But the point of these is HEPA high efficiency particulate air filters is basically to catch all the little bits of, you know, like dust and whatever in the air. The charcoal filters, and that's what this sort of bit is, 
um, with the charcoal in, basically vapors stick to the charcoal rather than going through it. So that's how you basically take gas out of the air. So a combination filter is basically like both of these things put together uh, like that. So everything basically, you know, the dusts get stopped by that section. The vapors get stopped by that section. Um, so yeah, when it comes to most combination filters, unless there's some glaring flaw of a particular series of filter, and again, <clears throat> you know, you'd probably have to research individual filters to find that out. They're all pretty standard as long as, as, long as they're made to a good standard. Um, but, you know, there never seems to be any kind of... Um, I think a lot of the time when it comes to filters is how well they actually store them. Um, because the problem with, like, some of the Scott filters is it's absolutely fine for the particulate filters, but some of the Scott vapour filters aren't actually wrapped up very well. They basically come in a vacuum-packed plastic bag. And the issue with that is, obviously, that if you puncture the bag, the filter's going to start getting exposed to the air. When you get the filters I like, you get things like these, the FP5s, where they actually have the sealed filters, and they're normally in a vacuum-wrapped sort of foil pack as well. So you end up getting, um, you know, like two la layers of protection of the sealed filter rather than something where it might split in transport and then the filter's already going to start absorbing vapours from the air. What is in good masks that get a bad reputation, Arthur? Well, I know a lot of the Polish stuff for some reason a lot of people don't like, and I don't know why. Again, the problem is I think there's a stigma with some of the Eastern European nations, Central and Eastern European nations, where people seem to forget that now the communist period's ended, that, you know, they're actually producing quite good stuff, where a lot of people, thank you again, D Van V, I really appreciate it, and I hope you obviously you stay safe and everything, but, um, yeah, so going back to things, I think one of the big mistakes people make is they think lots of these nations, you know, um, never made good equipment, or, you know, if they made Soviet copies, that's all they can make, where, you know, now the Cold War's ended, a lot of Eastern European countries are making really good equipment, and the same goes for Russia. A lot of the Soviet equipment was actually quite good for what it was. But the issue was they, um, you know, I think for some reason there's kind of a stigma where people assume that basically GP5 is the only thing Eastern European countries made when it's really not the case. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any particular masks I really like that a lot of people seem to hate. Um, I mean, going back to the Israeli masks, like there's the M15 and the 4A1 is further back there. I'll just get them both up to show you. Both those masks um, have got awful reputations um, amongst some kind of people. I don't know why. But basically, Israel, when they make military equipment, do not make equipment that, you know, is going to fail their soldiers or civilians. You know, I think Israeli stuff is generally pretty good. And, you know, obviously the 4A1 was made on a budget where they could make it for everybody in the country. Um and obviously it had to be good enough, but not so good that, you know, it cost too much or there was too much that could fail on it. But Israeli masks seem to be one of those ones that because you can get them in good surplus condition quite often, you'll get people say that they're shit for whatever reason, just because they're easily available. You know, they're garbage masks, they're shit, when that's clearly not the case. And thank you very much, Eric. Um, what do you think about the coronavirus situation? I hopeful it might be quarantined fairly soon that the mortality rate is like the mortality rate. We really don't know yet because the issue is hopefully I think from what some things we can tell from the mortality rate is that if you know you've got it early enough, you're in hospital and, you know, they can treat symptoms as they appear until you fight through it. You'll be all right. The issue with Corona seems to really be if you don't know you've got it, you know, you're spreading it quite fast because the dangerous thing of it is you can spread it in the incubation period. So you can feel fine, but you can still spread it. Um, so that's the really scary thing with it in that sense. The good news seems to be now that some measures are being put in place in Western countries and things and China's taking measures, the um, R naught of it, how spreadable it is, is going down. But there's still a lot to do. And I think one of the big problems at the moment is the stigma of kind of prepping for it and being sensible, where you seem to have a lot of people going, you're a paranoid prepper, blah, 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 just because you simply say this could potentially be very bad. So you want to take every precaution necessary, you know, necessary to minimize the risks, you know, thinking if it got really bad, what would I need to do? You know, what would I do just to not spread it easily if I had it? You know, all that sort of stuff, which is, I think, pretty sensible stuff. But sadly, it seems some people are kind of accusing you of being paranoid, but I guess they're the people who want the government to do everything for them, you know. 
Oh, and thanks, Mike, for reminding people that donate. Thank you, Andy Knight, as well. All right, thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed the videos. Remember, anybody that's donated or anybody at all, as long as I catch your question, if you've got any questions and I can help you with them, I'll be, you know, happy to try and answer them. And thank you again, Eric. Yeah, exactly. I think the best possible scenario with any of this sort of stuff is to simply say, you know, how bad could it get? Let's pronounce that. Yeah, exactly. Like what Tom just said, some level of paranoia survival trait. There was a video I was watching and the guy was saying, you know, it's wrong to assume that fear is an on-off switch, you know, you know, any kind of thing like worry is an on-off switch. What it should be is a level of worry, you know, where you base it on what level of threat it is. If the threat's low, then obviously you only need a low level of worry. If the threat's high, then you need a high level of worry. And it's like I was saying, I don't wear a stab vest all the time now. I I barely ever use my stab vest at all now, but when I used to work in the city, you know, and people would get mugged, there'd be heroin addicts everywhere, you know, junkies and all that sort of shit, especially if I was opening up the shop, you know, where you're a vulnerable target for being robbed or somebody try and ram raid almost a shop kind of thing. We used to, um, you know, I used to wear the stab vest then and I had a legit reason for wearing, but you still get people call you paranoid. And you know, now there's people in some areas of London where they're a pretty high probability of being stabbed, you know, or shot. And for them, it would certainly not be paranoid to, you know, have a stab vest on. You know, it's based on the risk. If if you live in a nice, quiet countryside place, you do not need a stab vest on all the time. It's that kind of thing. But, you know, sadly, there's some people who seem to basically always say any level of protection is paranoid. Well, do these people not wear seat belts when they drive a car? You know, it's that kind of thing, you know. Thank you very much, Nordic Resilience. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think the thing is that's really been good on this Corona stuff, and thank you very much, uh, Dwarven Miner as well, or Dwaven Miner, sorry, is that what I found with this Corona stuff, you can find lots of channels where there's people who are very knowledgeable in one field, whether or not they're really qualified it and not, you know, whether or not it's interest. Because like I said, I've got no qualifications in respirator stuff other than having kind of kosh training at work you know, control of substances has a, a hazardous to health, but most of it just comes from interest, you know, and basically like, you know, weird autistic interest and stuff. Um, but it's like you'll find doctors channels, you know, where they talk about what the risks are and, aren't, and they're obviously in a field where they've done a lot of understanding in it, you know. So if those people share stuff where they talk about how easily it spreads, what you can do and can't do, you know, you know, all the different kind of medical complications that might come about, that's valuable knowledge, you know. There's other channels that are really interesting that are people who've lived in China for years, you know, and they talk about some of the things that have made it bad in China, you know, and some of the things the Chinese government is now doing to control it, which is interesting information. But when you simply have somebody on the news say, oh, it's just like the flu, don't worry about it, that doesn't say much. Because for the people who haven't been really paying attention, in the UK, every day at the moment, the news is telling you almost to prep more and more, but they've not suddenly gone from it's the flu to oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, what they're doing is kind of ramping it up very slowly like that, where each day, you know, they'll have more interviews of doctors or whatever who are saying people should consider it, you know, if you get symptoms, don't go to an emergency room or to your doctors, phone a number, because that way you're not going to spread something to other people. What mask is that, sorry? Um, let me have a look for PC Master. Three M six thousand two hundred. Let's look that one up. That is the three M one, the three M half face masks. Yeah, they're very good. I have a Chinese copy that's not as good as the actual three M one, but it's still a very very good mask. Three M twenty ninety seven filters. Let's search which one that is. I can never remember with the three M ones which they are. Right. So is the twenty ninety seven one the pink ones? Yeah, the P one hundred P three pink ones. They're good. Don't get them wet, but other than that, they're fine. Um, Arthur says, what is the cheapest price you should buy for a proper CBRN gas mask? Right, if you mean full-on CBRN as an NBC, where you're having to consider chemical weapons that can break down the mask, I think you probably want a minimum of like $50 or pounds. Again, it's sometimes down to luck, because sometimes you'll find pretty much brand new unissued surplus masks in very, very good condition, um, fairly cheap. At the moment, of course, the price has massively gone up due to all the price gouging and panic buying of respirators, you know, and also all, all people just being aware. Like, so an Israeli M15, they turn up in all sorts of different prices. In the US, apparently, sometimes you can buy these for about $80 with a full CBRN suit, you know, gloves and all that sort of stuff, where sellers are bundling them together. 
this M15 is still in a very good condition, and it's from, I think, the 70s, this one. So if you got a new one, obviously, it'd be a lot better. Yeah, the stamp on the rubber is 83. I think one of the other stamps on it somewhere is 70, so I don't know if one was quality checked in 83, and it's originally from the 70s. I thought there was another date on it. Let me have a look. Oh, 1969, sorry. So even older, 1969. So, yeah, Israeli M15 is very well made. It's going to depend a lot, I think, on the individual mask. Um, what you want to do is not look for any articles where people kind of shield masks, because the problem is, um, like, obviously, with people like me, sometimes we have masks we really like or don't like. So I kind of shill Avon, but that's not for any way like Avon is paying me. It's just I really like Avon masks. You know, you get the same thing with some other people where they really like MSA masks or Scott masks or whatever. That's not too bad as long as you get, they kind of get a bit fanboyish with masks. The problem is some mask companies seem to almost pay people or kind of make fake accounts to talk about how their masks are amazing and every other mask is junk. Um, so yeah, that's the stuff with that, if that makes sense. Um, do you, Stabin Joe Scarborough says, do you need to replace filters on the mask every 24 hours after exposure to virus? It depends on the type of filters, unless they're like the disposable dust masks, no. If they're the ones, let me show you one. Like, let's say you've got a particulate filter, I just don't know if I've got one handy at the moment. Just like one of these, like in the canister with a particulate filter. No, you don't have to replace it every 24 hours. The filters last ages basically until they totally clog with dust and dirt. You need to decontaminate the mask when you take it off to be careful, but you don't need to throw away the filter. If you're using like dust masks, like the N95 mask, yeah, throw them away after a day just because they're going to be filling up with like snot and mucus and, you know, getting sweaty. Uh, let me catch it with all the comments, sorry, because um, I've missed some. Voltage Blue says, I'm more worried about closed stores, bare shelves more than the virus itself and being caught without enough food, water, meds, especially once my sister sets in. Yes, especially because like at the moment, gas masks are selling out just simply because people are thinking, oh, I might need one. And you're getting people who are buying out all the stocks to sell them at a massively inflated price. And I imagine the same thing will happen with food, water, medicine and everything else. Like I was saying to other people earlier in the stream, because I've got ulcerative colitis, which is like an autoimmune disease. I'm on medication daily for that to stop it deteriorating and eventually, you know, essentially killing me or requiring me to have my colon cut out and being given a stoma bag. Um, so what I need to think about is, you know, stockpiling as much as possible the medication for that, because if there's massive disruption to the supply chains or, you know, shit like that, I'm fucked in that regard. Um, let me just, sorry, check that I've not missed any comments from somebody because I really appreciate all the super chats and everything. Thank you, everyone. Um, I hope I've not missed any. Let me go to the latest ones in. Pro Steel Rain says, buying an FM12 cannot decide size. I am six foot six inch tall. 270 pounds, Nordic facial structure, I wear XL shirts, gloves, size 18 shoes, stay sure I want a size one, two is bit 90% people. The best thing to do would be measure your head. Do you know what cap size you are? Like, you know, if you measure your skull like that for a cap size, because with respirators, it normally always comes down to either the size of your head across there. Some companies do it on the size of your jaw. And the Soviets used to size them based on this bit to this bit of the chin. Um, you know, because it's basically like the shape of what the GP5s were. They would do them based on that size, like that. With the FM12, mine I've got is a size 2, which is the medium. It fits me fine. There's plenty of room for me to adjust the straps either way. So for most people, I think size 2 would be fine. Like you said, fits 90% of people. Unfortunately, Avon don't seem to publicly release the sizing guide because I think when companies mass buy Avon masks, they get somebody to come in and fit test all their employees and then give them a mask based on that size. Um, what you could do, and this is what I recommend to people who really don't know their size in a mask if they're buying their first mask, is get the GP5 sizing guide. You can just Google GP5 sizing guide and find it online. Work out what size you'd be in GP5 and use that as a rough estimate to translate it into other mask sizes. So if you're, say, a size 1 in GP5, now bear in mind, Soviets used size 1 the smallest or 0 is the smallest, size 4 is the largest. With Avon and a lot of Western companies, weirdly, size 1 is the biggest, size 3 is the smallest, or size three is the, 4 is the smallest, sorry. So what you need to do is 
make sure you understand how the sizes go across different brands of masks and countries of masks. You know, some might just say S, M or L on the mask, you know, for small, medium, large. But it's not a bad shout, even if the masks aren't measured in the exact same way, to use a GP5 sizing guide to then say, right, I know I beat a large in a GP5, which means I'm probably a large in another country's mask. And that's, you know, the best way I think you can do it with lots of things. All right. Hopefully I've caught up with the chat. Ooh, that's interesting. What's that for the GP5 or a different one, Ghost Jesus, the sizing tool? Right, let me have a look at his channel then, Gaming Mail. And the problem is at the moment, I've had lots of people saying go to certain channels and it's had nothing to do with coronavirus or it's, you know, the complete tinfoil hat conspiracy stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to the channel. I'm just checking it's like a proper channel. Yeah, it seems to be. Um, I'll put a link in for the channel. As I said, I've not looked at his videos, but um, I'll post a link here. Let me add you on Discord then. Or how how's um D Van V doing his Discord thing? Sorry. Let me copy and paste it into the thing. Let me take the thing out and then work out. Obviously, when you add people on Discord, you don't do it quite like that, but. MSA Ultra View, I don't have one, let me Google it. I think somebody asked me about that the other day. Let me... Ooh, sorry, I'm, I'm losing my place in the chat now. MSA Ultra View. Yeah, that looks very good. It seems quite similar again to um, assuming it's 40 millimeter, not their own proprietary filters. It, oh, I see. It's one that looks like it's 40 millimeter, but you can adapt it with some sort of screw thing to take proprietary filters. Yeah, that looks fine because MSA is a very good mask company. It looks a bit like, to me, weirdly, a bit like the BEM 4GP, just with like a filter that comes directly out the front. Yeah, it looks very good, and as I said, MSA is a very, very good mask company. One of the best US companies that makes masks. Um, yes, I would say, John, go for it, yes, because S10s at the moment have been massively going up in price. I'd pay £55 for an S10 if I didn't have one at this point. Um, so, yeah, go for that. I'd say go for that. Certainly go for that. Yeah, let me scroll up, Tom, sorry. What the army marches on its stomach thing, yeah. Or was there something else I missed? Let me let me control F so I can make sure. Oh yeah, India. If if you didn't say one after that, because yeah, if India, like I think we're saying that on the other stream. The problem with India is because the sanitation's low in a lot of places. There, people are really packed in. That could really really spread. Yeah, I think a lot of diseases are perfect for India. If that wasn't. If there wasn't one after that, you said. Oh, the main factor, sorry, I've found the one I think you mean now. It's pre-planning and physical readiness. A strong, healthy, battle-worthy man always has the advantage. General fitness is a factor, even fighting off disease. Yeah, exactly. It's also willpower as well, because when my uncle was dying from cancer, um, he wanted to see his daughter get married. And he survived all the way through it, even when his health was deteriorating, to, you know, for her wedding. And then afterwards, you know, he went downhill quite fast. But I think there's a lot of stuff like that, isn't there? It's mental and, you know, a lot of the stuff with the right mindset for sort of stuff. Right. I'm not a massive fan, Dylan, as some people, my subscribers know about the Scott GSR. But assuming you get a GSR in good condition, it would work absolutely fine for Corona. My main issues with the Scott GSR was just when the British Army adopted it, they didn't adopt it really for the right reasons. It was more just because it was the cheapest option at the time, and they had a lot of faults with it that they shouldn't have adopted a mask for. But the better news of the GSR now is if you wanted it as a civilian, those issues wouldn't affect you. And Avon now is apparently producing the GSR under licence, because when Scott got bought out by 3M and could no longer make the mask for Britain, they got Avon to re, you know, start doing the mask. Yeah, that's pretty much it, PC Master. I 
I wonder if they're having to do that as a legal disclaimer, Chancellor. Because um, it wouldn't surprise me if they're having to do that in case somebody tries to sue them because they buy the filter and still get it. I'll have a look, uh, Demuluk, sorry. Oh. Let me try adding D Van V because I think somebody's got his actual thing figured out. Yeah, there we go. Added. Um, but yeah. Did you did you send it as a PM or did you do it in surplus discussion? Which thing on Discord did you do it under? So I can find it. All right, let me add you as well. What anybody who's just wondering when I add you on Discord, you'll get a friend's request from me. I'll add you to my friends list, and then um, I can invite you to the server as soon as you accept the friends request. Because I don't think it lets me send a server request, like invite, as soon as people accept the friends request. Yeah, I remember you donating Sassy Sage, that's fine. Let me add you there. Or Saggy Sage, sorry. But I do remember you donating, that's fine. Um, yeah, which thing did the person post it in? about the filters, because I can't see the message. Invite to server. Yeah, so Demilux, which thing did you post it under? So I can look at it. Or is it quite an old post? Thank you, Dave. Right, have you got anything particular in mind or is it just gonna be anything that works? Oh, Dave, the mask I was showing at the beginning of the stream, if, if there are any of these in the US for like $60 or less, I'd say this is really good. Because decent sized voice diaphragm there, Exhale valve there, good panoramic lens, a little bit of distortion to the vision on this one, but not much. So as you can see, if you look at the fallout shout sign in the corner, you'll see that it does distort the things at the edge a little bit, but not very much, but you get a very good field of view. All right, cool, let me have a look. Those don't look like MP5 filters. Because if it means MP5 is in the, you know, what's it? Oh, what's the name of it? Bloody hell. The Polish MP5, the Maspo MP5. The filters that, the FP5 filters look like this, unless it's, um, you know, a different company making the filters under license. They look like the same kind of shape looking at that. I would say, as they're quite cheap, it might be worth getting one or two, checking they seem like legit filters, because I've very, very rarely seen fake filters, as in totally fake. Um, and then I would say, yeah, get, get one, check they seem to be legitimate filters, and then, yeah, maybe bulk order a load if they're still in stock. They don't seem... They don't, sh you know, come out to me to be instantly fake, but I don't think they're almost MP5 filters. Right. The M10 is fine against radioactive fallout. It's, I'm not a fan of the M10 because it's like the USM17, just nowhere near as well designed, you know, like cheaper rubber, you know, all that sort of stuff. But in terms of does it still offer particulate protection, it's absolutely perfect for that, yes. Let me add you SIB as well, or SIBA, sorry. Right, you're added as well. Oh, did I miss Sandman? Uh, sorry if I miss Sandman, I'll add him now, because Mike's PM'd me his thing. Right, Sandman is added as well. Let me invite to server. Right, let me get back to the chat. Oops. Sandman server. Oh, yeah. 
DV, uh, Dvan V, sorry, you've turned up on my thing now, so let me invite you. There you go. Basically, um, for anybody wondering, the Discord's just people basically chatting about surplus or whatever. But, you know, you you can ask questions to people who might know the answers on there. And the nice thing about the Discord is you can kind of get back to people a bit easier than YouTube. So if somebody's, you know, and you can post photos. So if somebody says, oh, you know, I've got this filter, what is it? And they post a load of photos and other people can look and kind of go, hmm, let me get back to you on that. Rather than somebody on the YouTube comments saying, I've got a filter, it's YouTube, so I can't post a picture of it. What is it? And then we're like, um, can't really tell about any info. You can't really make a very good homemade gas mask because it requires to face fit really well. But what I would, um, what I would suggest for people, if you just want something particular protection, uh, cut a load of old sheets or something, stitch them together so you've got a few la layers of kind of sheet or pillowcase kind of material put some sort of very basic straps on them use paracord something like that string so you can get it tight enough to your face um that would give you all right particulate protection not particularly good but you know much better than nothing those bottle masks aren't very well made for the most part as much as the filter idea of filling um an old two liter bottle or something with charcoal works inferior filtration most people have them they don't fit close to the face When you say M3 6800, you mean a 3M6800? Yep, if you can't get anything else, get a 3M6800. Get any of the P3 slash P100 filters for it. Yep, voltage blue, let me just do that for you now. There we go. You'll get a friend's request, click that, and then you'll be invited on. Let me look it up, because on off the top of my head, I don't know which 3M thing that is. I said the problem with a lot of these companies is they make products of really long numbers and just sort of random letters, so I'll just Google it. Is it FR40B? Oh, that looks pretty good, actually. So that's like a proper 40mm filter made by 3M, isn't it? Uh, can I find one that actually specifies what the filter levels are of it? Are? Uh, let me have a look. Where's the thing? Uh, FRM40B. There's, there's one of the masks, which is basically the USM-40 military mask, just the 3M branded version. That's a very good mask, the um, M40, if that's the particular one. Oh, thank you very much, Jerry. I have an A1 organic vapor filter. Will that work against water droplets spit and relation? It will work to a degree, right? So P3 filters are always better, as in, you know, the particle filters, especially when they have the plastic cases around. Vapor filters would certainly absorb, like, the water droplets and stuff like that. Also, organic vapour filters will have a very basic particulate filter at each end to keep the charcoal inside. So as much as they're kind of not really up to spec in terms of what's recommended, they are a hell of a lot better than a surgical kind of mask or, you know, a very, very basic filter. So it's kind of the thing, if you can't get anything better, yes, that would work to a degree. I mean, how, how well it would work, I don't know, because I don't know if any of these companies have ever done tests like if somebody sneezes directly into the filter, which filter medium filters it best kind of thing. But yeah, an organic vapor filter, even if it's only A1 rated, does have a very basic part a very basic particle filter at each end just to keep the filter medium in. And the filter medium, the charcoal itself, will do something against spittle and stuff like that. Oh, thank you very much, Dylan, as well. What are some good filters for an S10? Um, any 40 millimeter NATO filter will fit. If you want coronavirus ones, um, let me see in the description. Do we is this is there still in stock those ones the person had in of the P340 millimeter ones? Let me have a look. Uh, Scott Pro ones. Any of these still in stock? Right, they've gone up to 10.99 each now. I don't know if they'll ship to wherever you are, but those are very good filters for just basic particulate protection. Oh, thanks as well, Peach. Um, if you want full 
NBC style filters. There are probably some really expensive ones, but again, Polish FP5 filters, wherever I've put the last one. I like FP5 filters personally, it's on the desk, that's how I can't see it. Um, you can sometimes get these for like 10 euros or so each. There's some there's a link in the description to these. They normally come foil wrapped as well, and then they're sealed up like this inside. It's got a chemical protection layer in there as well, but it's also got the particulate protection bit at the front. Um, so again, you can sometimes get these for not all that much money. And, you know, they're Polish military NBC filters. I think Poland's moving to a new generation of filter now called the FP6. But FP5s were very good for what they were. I know some people don't like them, but personally I've never had a problem with the FP5. Uh, yep, the P3 bit means it definitely will. And all the other bits in it, like the ABE protection, just give you even more protection. So yeah. Uh, let me look up the 2135 filter. The 3M bit would be fine. Yep, that's the disc particulate filters again. Absolutely fine. Don't let them get damp, but other than that, they'll be fine. Hello, Nicholas Green. I see you've got a tick mark next to your name. Hello. Is there anything similar you can get, um, Jude? Just because I'm thinking there's probably, you know, very similar filters that just aren't marked up as much. Right, which ones? A lot of them are just ones I printed out of a printer. You know, if you Google it, image civil defense posters or like propaganda posters, gas mask, you'll find a lot of those. The big Soviet one was from eBay, and I think it was a Lithuanian seller. And they do very good high resolution prints on really nice paper of the old um, Soviet ones. So if you search Soviet civil defense posters, they've got lots as well that show nuclear blasts and like fallout and radiation ranges. That's the one all on respirators. So on the bottom, it's particulate respirators against fallout. Top bits on the GP5, or, you know, SHUM62U, whatever you want to call it. Um, GP5M there, regular GP5 there. And then that section has all the children's masks on it. As in the PPM88, Pete. Um, right. It depends which version of it is there is, because the PPM88 has been made by a lot of different manufacturers, supposedly. It also depends on um, which period it was made and all that. Um, the PPM88 I got was from the late Cold War when the Soviet quality control was shit because the Soviet Union was collapsing. And that PPM-88 is pretty dreadful. Um, I mean, it's a good mask in some ways, but the voice diaphragm was broken. And it does give me the impression it was a bit like a lot of the other late Soviet masks where the probability you get one where all the components are still good isn't very good, you know, isn't very high. If you buy the modern Russian PPM-88, so like the mag ones, or whatever they're called, um you know, made by various manufacturers, or the Briz or whatever they're called. They're apparently very good. The problem is, it's just obviously, if you're buying a PPM-88 and you just don't know where which company made it and which generation it was from, the quality control is literally just, you know, all over the place like that. So, Lenin, thank you very much. I didn't think Lenin would donate, but thank you, Lenin. <laughs> it's just a little joke, obviously, on... Uh, communism but got 33 mn95 filters adapted into olive 3 m filters n95 ones only good for 30 uses let me add you um if it's been adapted into a filter case so you can actually you know um attach it to a mask it would last a lot longer because it's not getting all the moisture in it non-stop like a dust mask would be if you're breathing out onto it constantly so they would last longer um with an M95 filter, as in a particulate filter, when it starts going wrong is when it starts clogging. So you'll find it harder and harder and harder to breathe through it. Um, so yeah, if you've adapted it into a filter kind of case, I would say absolutely fine. Keep using it until it gets difficult to breathe through. Yeah, that's the thing, London, and that's why like rubbing alcohol or something you know, is useful to carry with you, because that's what somebody was saying on a video I was watching, like a medical sort of bloke, he was saying, the issue is that, you know, um, certain door handles, you might, you know, wash your hands when you leave the house or something, if you touch a door handle on a bus or, you know, a railing or something, and then touch your face, thank you very much, Simon, you know, you can then rub, you know, whatever back into your face. Um, right, dictum, if you're on about SCBA masks, there's a bit of a problem. Lots of them aren't designed to use adapters, 
I've never found the adapters, and some of them are designed always to work on a positive pressure system, as in the valves don't let air out unless the air pressure inside is big enough. So I've got a really cool Sieb Gorman mask, which is a British military issue one from, I guess, the 80s or maybe early 90s. I'd love to use it with 40 millimeter filters. If you put a 40 millimeter filter on it, it just steams up horribly because you're, you're not exhaling hard enough to get it to leave the mask. Well, thank you very much, LMD. Just bought a cheap P3 JSL for say half hours for Amazon. Is it decent? But yep. No, they're very good. Um, you only need to change the filters on it, especially because they've got the plastic casing on it when the filters really, really start to clog. Um, very, very hard to say, um, you know, depending on which environment you're in, how smoggy, you know, dusty, all that sort of stuff, it will be from to clog. But if you've got the particulate filters in the plastic cases like it comes with, it will last months and months for most people, probably years. That's the massive advantage to getting the ones with the plastic casing around is it's very hard for moisture and other crap to get in and wreck the filter. Yeah, very good point, Londonium Armoury. What about radiation, Super Teddy? Oh, a point I'll make on today's video before I go off, because um, Hype was saying about this to me in a private chat. He was saying, oh, let me add you as well, Simon. He was saying the really good thing um, to get as well is UVB lighting or, you know, good UV lighting. Because I've got UVC lighting. You have to be slightly careful about that burning your skin and eyes. But UV light apparently kills viruses really easily because um, it doesn't like your name, Clubbuts. Is there a letter missing from it or something? I'll let you get back to me if there was a capitalization in a different place or whatever. Um, yeah, the yeah, because what Hype was saying, because he's actually a biologist kind of person, you know, like qualified. So I'm going to take his word on this completely. Um, is that when a virus is on, you know, a surface inside, because there's not much actual UV light hitting it, the virus is quite stable and it will survive for quite a long time. Viruses don't survive outside on surfaces very long because the sun kills them. So if you get bright UV lighting, the UV actually just completely destroys the virus, um, which is why obviously it's, you sometimes see in movies, you know, them go and get the UV light for the virus. But yeah, apparently that works. So what I did on eBay tonight was I bought a really big UVB bulb that I can screw in. And because UVB is less dangerous to the skin and eyes than the UVC I've got, um, what you can do obviously is... Um, you know, put that in a lamp somewhere or whatever, especially near a doorway. So if you came inside, you could flick that on, you know, turn around near it for a couple of minutes as, as you start taking all your gear off. And that will be killing, you know, better than sanitizer, the virus on it. Oh, yeah, I'll check the Patreon messages right now then. Apologies if you sent one earlier and I didn't see it. I've been at work all weekend. But, and what's the other message? The White Wolf says... What is the best vest to attach mask hose, mask water bottle system so that the mask hose, the filtering bottle, or tube is not hanging about? Some... Right. Generally, you want the satchel rather than the vest um, because the satchel is where you can do all the bouts up. If you get, though, like any kind of, do you mean like a vest as in like military body armor style vests? I think pretty much any of the ones, you know, that have all the molly system, whatever they're called across, if you get one of those, Get any sort of pouch that will fit, you know, all the filter in there, all the bag. You should be able to secure the bag really tight on there. I've not ever personally really done it. I can do a video on that for you, actually. But, yeah, I've personally never really looked into it because I prefer having smaller filters on the mask itself. But, yeah, most militaries either have the mask satchel attached to the molly system or whatever on the military body armour. Or they have, um, you know, like one where it goes on the with straps, you know, on the side or whatever. But yeah, let me, sorry, let me check Patreon messages for you. I've got seven messages on Patreon, apparently. Um, so I'll need to definitely go back and read a load of these messages. Apologies for any I've missed. I think I've literally had like seven messages on Patreon today. Um, but yeah, let me just take the space out of your vibe. Thank you very much. As soon as you accept it, I'll invite you. There was somebody else earlier who gave me one. I don't know if he's corrected how it was spelt yet. 
what is in GP5? Is an asbestos? It's GP5 right above me there. Oh, that's an important thing for people that don't know. Don't buy old World War II masks to protect you from the coronavirus. The filters are really old and falling apart. The masks won't necessarily even sit tight to your face anymore due to the age of the rubber. And, um, yeah, the filters contain asbestos. Yep, JSP half face mask with P3 should be absolutely fine because it's basically a 3M style half face mask. The P3 filters on that are quite good. Those JSP masks get really good reviews on screw fix and everywhere like that in the UK. I need to buy one myself just to compare it to, you know, the 3M style masks, but they're good prices and they're actually built properly. And I know places, you know, that actually use those where they have to provide respiratory protection to workers. So. Ah, that's a very good point, gaming. I would say a brand new M40 is worth a hundred dollars. Yes, Bulgarian PG1. If you can get one for not too much money, yes, the Bulgarian PG1 actually fits my face better than the German M65. Um, at the moment, Daniel, there's no Geiger counters I've not seen, and I've got like the Terra P that's really good, and I got that British nuclear industry or like American nuclear industry one that the British nuclear industry bought, like little personal decimeter electric one. Oh, the people won't have seen these. This is a cool one I got recently, old decimeter pens, one that goes to half a centigrade. I have to get a light behind it so you can see it. But um, So this is about 50 Rontgen in Rontgen numbers, but this is still a cool one. See that? I don't know how visible that will be on there, but yeah, that goes up to... 50, um, well, essentially 5 centigrade, which is um, half a grey, which is 50 Rontgen. Uh, let me just add you Pro Steel. Just one second. Done. When you accept the thing, I'm like you. So there's that one. Let me just show you the other one I got as well. The other one I got is actually, I think, just a more modernised version of the 500 Rontgen one I got recently. Um, but it's just got, um, it's just in centigrade or whatever, not Rontgen. That's this one. I think these are German army ones. Annoyingly, I don't have the charger for these. And I ended up damaging the other one, taking it apart to um, modify it to fit another charger. So I'm not going to take this one apart. I'm just going to store it as is. But yeah. Let me just get that there so you can see it. It's a bit bright. But yeah, see that centigrade goes up to 500 centigrade. So this one goes up to a lethal dose, basically. These German ones, I think these are West German, are very, very well made. I mean, you'd expect that, wouldn't you? Because they're German, but they're a bit overcomplicated and prone to breaking. I think not the Soviet ones still end up being my favourite ones. Right, changing filters. Depends what kind of mask you have to start with. If you've got filters like this or just particulate filters, you basically won't need to. If the mask starts clog, if the filter starts clogging up and you can't breathe, then you know you need to change the filter. If if you've got an N95 mask, you're probably going to have to change the filter every day. Essentially, bin that mask, put a fresh disposable on. That's why the disposable. Yeah, let me add you on Discord, Pete. Have you donated, Dylan? Because it's for people who donate uh, the Discord. Also, the person who donated earlier, who. I tried to add and it didn't like their username. Can you repost your name after checking the uh, spelling? It's not letting me add you either, Pete. Um, is there meant to be a, any capitals in your name anywhere? Because with Discord, it has to be case perfect and everything. All right, I'll take your word for it, Dylan. I hope you're not lying. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll take your word for it. Either a Patreon supporter or somebody who's literally donated a dollar or a pound or whatever. Right, let me copy you in again, Simon. Let's see if it works this time. Friend request, friend request, friend request failed. Let me try again. Why does it not like your ID? It's worked that time. Right, I put yours in three times. The third time it works. I guess it was just Discord being funny. Let me copy and paste that other guy's one in again. 
Right, let me do you, Dylan, if that's working as well. Yeah, yours has worked. Um, what was the other one somebody posted just now? I'll go off in a few minutes, by the way, because I have been at work all day. Um, where, was, where was the one I missed? Sorry. Um, oh, yeah, it was Pete. Let me try yours again, Pete, just in case it's one where if I add you like five times in a row, it will suddenly let me add you. Yeah, there we go. It's worked this time. Discord seems really funky with sometimes you can... Um... There we go. As in... You know, like, uh, as in, somebody will give you a name, you'll put it in, it'll say it's not correct, not correct. You just do it like five times in a row, and eventually it just says, oh, yeah, that works. No, I didn't, Vesta. Let me have a look. Yep. Post your Discord ID in the thing. I'll send you a friends request and then invite you to the server. Um, but I'm glad the videos have been helping people. Right. Um, let me uh, see... Which which thing did you post it in? Um, lesser. Is it in surplus discussion or? General, right. Let me see if I can find whereabouts it was on there. Honeywell, was it the Honeywell thing? Ah, cool. All right, cool. I'll paste that. So, is this a basically like a Honeywell one that is made under license in Poland? So, it's actually just like a Polish version of a Honeywell thing. If anybody was wondering what beeped just now, that was my decimeter. That one beeps really loud, actually, saying it. Or was that my No, actually, it was a therapy, wasn't it, beeping that time? But yeah, that's, that's the therapy. Private noob, you need to give me your Discord actual ID, because you'll have your name, and then it will have a four-digit number after it. Right, luckily, D, because I'm D Van V, because I'm because I'm in the UK, um, I get that all done under like the socialised healthcare thing. I buy my prescription thing annually because otherwise I'd have to pay nine pound basically every month on it. Um, the problem is is basically the expiry times on the medication and how much they'll let you have because I assume it's a controlled substance. So what I do is basically they give me two months at a time at least because the doctor said because you're going to be on it you know all of your life will give you more in a prescription than less so it's less of an irritation so i get two months worth uh, worth of, two months worth of the medication at once um but they don't last very long because it's like foil wrap stuff that basically you have to keep it in the right temperature stuff it's a bit like you know if you're a diabetic and you have to keep um insulin stuff so what you do is obviously you put I put the repeat in with the pharmacy, they sort me out a box. So what I do is basically every sort of seven probably under seven weeks, every probably five to six weeks, I put in a request. So I've always got another two boxes coming in pretty quickly before I get anywhere close to finishing my last box. Um, but what I might start doing at the moment is doing it a bit more frequently than that, so I can start building up a bit more. Again, it will expire, but I suppose even that stuff expired is more efficient than not having anything. Oh, thank you, Private Noob. Uh, that's the exact thing I wanted. Yeah, the two-digit kind of thing. Not well, four-digit, but you know what I mean, the, the two-part thing. Um, did I send the invites to everybody else? Yeah. And you did it correctly. Thank you. If you mean the free M6800, yes, it is. Um, I think I already answered that question, but yeah, it is a good mask. I've never used it, but it's absolutely fine, especially if you use it with good filters. So get P3 or P100 filters for it. Right. The weird thing with Myra masks is apparently they didn't even get proper CVRN certification for some of them. Um, 
from what I understand, and I've never owned any Myra masks, is they're basically very uh, overpriced versions of Czech military masks. They put their own names on, because I think they were one of the manufacturers of Czech masks. Or well, thank you very much, Pseudonym Smith. Um, but yeah, thank you very much. Let me add you. But yeah, so Myra masks, personally, because I've never owned any, I don't have an opinion on them. But I know a lot of people seem to either say they're the best mask ever sliced bread, who may or may not be getting paid to say that, um, allegedly, you know, I don't want to get in legal trouble for saying that, or, um, you know, people say they're absolute dog shit. I've not got any Myra masks, so I can't comment, but from what I do know is that when they sell masks under their own name, which are the same ones they made for the Czech military, they cost way, way more for the exact same mask than the Czech military version. Um... So I'd be very cautious of getting a Myra mask. You might really like them, but for the money you spend on a Myra mask, you could get another mask and loads of filters that, you know, is probably all around better. I like the Climax 7-3 one, yeah. Anyway, I will be heading off now. Um, the P3 bit in them, Eastern Confederate, will be the exact same thing. It's just the other one will have charcoal that's impregnated behind it. If you're using it against gas or random things, you'll want the combination one. If you're using it only for particulate threats, uh, threats it's much cheaper and lighter just to use the particle one. Because the problem is, to give people a comparison, I might be able to show this quite easily. Um, this is a bit of a bulky particulate filter for a particle filter, but notice the size difference and obviously the weight difference between these two types of filters. So the problem is, I mean, and it will depend on what the combination filter is, of course, but, um, yeah, the problem is, obviously, if you're buying combination filters, is they're a lot bulkier and, you know, heavier than just particle filters. So on a lot of masks, they'll weigh the mask down a lot more. Yeah, Andy, let me add you, and then I'll go off, because um, you donated earlier, so let me add you and invite you. Uh, but a massive thank you to everybody that donated tonight. I really appreciate it, especially because YouTube started demonetizing a lot of these videos. Um, which, you know, doesn't surprise me, I guess, YouTube being YouTube. But I do really appreciate the donations. I'm really glad the info on the videos is helping people. And it's really nice that, you know, my channel is getting a load more ooh, views than normal. Um, looking at filter over. But, yeah, especially that $100 donation, uh, Van, I really appreciate that. Anyway, yeah, I'll be heading off. I've sent um, a thing to what's his name's one. I'll be on Weapon Collector's stream at um, 10. But yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah, stay safe, everybody. I'll be doing updates quite frequently. Also, for the people who are new to the channel and you don't know, normally I always do a video on Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. Normally it's always 5 p.m. UK time. But at the moment, I'm pretty tempted to actually shift it to like 12 UK times in midday, uh, 1200, because it seems a lot more people actually seem to be watching them at that sort of time. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to experiment with that. But, yeah, at the moment, I'm doing more videos just because I'm getting so many requests. Can you do something on this as Corona develops, blah, blah, blah. But normally videos are Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, every week. And it's a mix of things like Geiger counters, gas masks. Used to be a lot of air rifle stuff, but I don't do that as much now. Um, but, you know, in, in, ge in general, just kind of military surplus kind of historical things. But, yeah. Right. The streams I always do in the evening, generally, um, just because it's easiest for me, especially on days I've been working, either to do them after work or, you know, um, in the evening, just because it's a bit more relaxed for me to do it then. Um but yeah, a big thank you to everybody. But the videos, obviously, no matter what time they go on, you can always watch them at a later date. It's just more what time would be more suitable for people watching them initially so YouTube actually shares them. But yeah, thanks, everybody. I really appreciate all the donations. Have a good evening. And I will stream tomorrow, probably 8 to 9 sort of p.m. UK time. Yeah, see you.